pointer with you. One little technique here to bring people around from behind their desk to in front of their desk to sit in no man's land. I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are thinking I could never do that. Try it. You must go and try it. One great way of doing it is, is just to say to him, I've just got one copy of whatever you're there with, one copy of this brochure, one copy of these figures or whatever, uh, that I'd like to go through with you. Wouldn't we be more comfortable if you came and sat this side of your desk? So guide them round to come and sit side by side with you if you can. If you don't feel that you can do this, look, give it a go anyway, because uh, it, it, it's very powerful. But if sometimes if I'm meeting a young lady, for instance, behind her own desk, I might leave her there because I don't want to be dominant here. I don't want to dominate the situation. So what I would do in that case, if, I was, uh, if she was sitting behind her desk like this, what I would tend to do as I was walking in, before I sat down, I would just move my chair to one corner of the desk and then sit down here. So now I've got a 90 degree angle, I can talk to her across her desk, which is acceptable. Much better though if you can get them to come and sit side by side with you at the front here. You're much more likely to have a successful meeting in that way. Okay. Um, other uh, meetings that you will often come face to face with would be uh, the sort of business meeting um, where you have lots of different people in the same meeting. Now I'm going to presume that this meeting has just got three people in it and we're going to borrow people from the front here. Warren, could you help me with this please? And Nigel and I need a lady. Diana, would you please? Thank you very much. If you can leave the space in the middle there for the lady. We'd like to move, uh, so move your chairs back a bit. I'm going to move this back before you sit down. There we go. Okay. Move them back in a row there. Okay. Good if you can just sit down there. Now, when the first thing you do when you're going into a meeting um, is to check people's body language uh, to see if they are mimicking each other. Just put your hands together there, would you, uh, Nigel? Thank you very much. And you can see now that these three people are mimicking each other's body language, which means if I went into this meeting and I saw these three people doing this, I would say to myself, ah, the meeting's going very well, everybody's warm and friendly now, no problems at all, everything's going fine. If, on the other hand, they were unmimicking their body language, you'd like to cross your legs there, Diane. You'd like to fold your arms, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. If I saw that, on the other hand, that would be quite different, and I would feel there that there's some, been some arguments already in the meeting. Um, and, of course, you want to pacify everybody, keep everybody warm and friendly. You can't always avoid arguments. One of the interesting things <coughs> about unmimicking body language is when you look around, you'll find little groups of mimicked body language. Particularly in bigger meetings, people will mimic the body language of the person they're supporting. Um, so you can see who is supporting whom by just looking at their body language, which is also quite powerful. Sometimes when you're in a meeting, uh, and you're listening to a speaker, um, you will have all sorts of different gestures. When you're listening to somebody and uh, you're, you're sick of listening to him, you've had enough, he's said quite enough. Now, what you would like to do would be this. <laughs> but you can't do that, of course. Um, but in your mind, you've still got hand and ear that you're thinking about. So what you will tend to do is rub your ear like that. Uh, uh, Warren, if you'd like to do that, can you do that? Just hold your ear like that. Okay, keep held there. Okay, so when people are doing that, you can guess if you're speaking, they're not listening any longer. They think uh, they've, they've, they've really had enough of what you've been saying. Sometimes when people don't want to see you any longer, when they're sick of the sight of you, and they've really been looking at you quite long enough, they'll do this, oh Lord, uh, and rub their eyes like that. You notice people doing that? Um, now, uh, if, uh, uh, Nigel, if you could do that, please, uh, keep your hands there. That's it. So people do that when they... Sometimes also, when people think you're lying, they would like to put that your, their hand over your mouth. Uh, but they, they, they can't do that, of course. But the hand-mouth thing is still in their subconscious, so they will often do this. Put your hand over your mouth, that's right. And this is the typical three monkeys you see at any <laughs> meeting. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Okay, if you can take a seat now, thanks very much. Give them a round of applause there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, fellas.